Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hello viewers, nice to have you with me again. I'm George the Antique Nomad, at the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also doing YouTube every Wednesday. So it's great to have you with me again. I had an unusual and nomadic day yesterday. I expected to be going to the Nashville flea market and a nice little country auction, but I had trouble getting out of town, so I ended up having to stay in a motel in Georgia. And Southern Georgia doesn't really have a lot of antiquing going on. So I just off an off chance decided to look up estate sales and it turned out there was a really interesting looking one that was an hour west of where I was. So I decided to go check it out and it put me on a different path. And it turned out to be really fun. And I went to this historic home in this little town called Dawson, Georgia. And it was mainly traditional high-end looking antiques because that's more, you know, Georgia's one of the original 13 states, so they're more into the traditional. But, you know, within that, you can find things that really jump out and work with vintage or whatever you do. Uh, plus, it was a really nice house, so I thought just to get to see it would be cool. And it turned out that, yeah, there were some really good things there, and I had a lot of fun and bought some cool stuff. Um, so let's uh, take a look. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you, now this is Fiesta. And it's got the Fiesta mark here, USA. It's made by Homer Lachlan China, um, HLC. So that's all those marks there. And this stuff's been made since the 1930s. Back in the 30s, they had a different shade of yellow. They're still making this. So um, now they do uh, this shade of yellow, I think is probably 1990s, but they've come up with other odd pieces. And because there's so much demand, they can't really keep up with it. So a lot of stuff comes in and out of the line real fast. So the deviled egg plate is something that people really look for. And uh, everything in the kitchen was half off. So I paid $6 for this, and this is about a $25 piece plus shipping online so I was happy to get that now this is kind of going to be like Christmas because I mean I bought all this stuff they put it in boxes and we're just going to take it out and see what there is I don't really remember what all I bought so uh, we'll get to have the full effect including paper rustling and the whole thing oh okay here we go yeah these are nice uh, again, one nice thing about shopping in a house with older and more traditional antique things is sometimes you get a good deal on something that is really kind of um, kind of cool and attractive and I have customers for this sort of thing. These are all sterling silver tops. The cut work on the side is patterned sort of, I think they call it zipper. And these are going to be from about 1910. but. Women of all ages, young to old, like these things on their dresser for boudoir items, for powder, for makeup pots, for whatever. And so I was really happy to get these because um, they all cost me about uh, 15 to $20 each, and then they're going to be like worth about 30 to 40 So um, let me move something out of the way so we have a little better light here. Uh, this is all just kind of spontaneous. I'm in a nice uh, park up north now and thought, well, you know, it's hard to get to all the haul videos, so why don't we haul it while we are unpacking it? And so here we are. Um, anyway, so those are nice pieces there. I was really happy to see those. We'll set those aside. Okay, now this piece is kind of crude looking, but the thing that appealed to me about it is that, whoops, oh, hey, there's stuff inside. Surprise! <laughs> Told you we're just doing this as we go. I'll have to look inside everything. Um, so it's got a mark on the bottom here that looks sort of like a nine, but if you turn it upside down, it could also be a B. And that made me think that maybe this was by B pottery out of Kentucky. I'm not sure about that. I actually think it could be one of the Carolina potteries as well. Um, but the appeal of this stuff is it's yellowware. This was the first major industry in America during the Industrial Revolution that made it. Bybee pottery was in production, for example, from 1809 until 2011. And finally, the sixth generation of the family decided that uh, they were done. But they uh, made all this stuff where they had this yellow clay and the natural gas to fire the kilns. 
And this one's a nice piece. It's probably 1920s or 30s in the Depression. A lot of those companies that mainly made crockery and functional wear had to make vases and other things to try to expand their line to stay in business. And the color also looks like about a 1930s color. And this really goes with farmhouse chic. So I know someone's gonna like this. It says $6 on it. They actually gave this to me for half price too. So I paid three. I think it's worth about 20 and you drop a bouquet in. This is a great shape because it kind of opens right out. And it's a good color to go with these gray and neutral tones people are into now. So I think that piece will do well. Uh, and this thing that fell out of it is actually a yo-yo. It was $3 half price, so a dollar and a half. Festival professional model, it says. And the festivals were these things, apparently in the 60s and 70s, um, they had these uh, festivals where they would do this yo-yoing and you do tricks and I think kids could win thousands of dollars if they were really good. So it was kind of a big deal. This one shaped like a baseball from the mid 60s, worth probably about $10. And it's the kind of little interesting fun stuff I like to put in a case at a show or in an antique store just to kind of slow people down and get them to look at little things. Um, speaking of which, okay, so on Wednesday, my YouTube video is actually going to be a, on the golden age of postcards because I got a really great collection. And so um, I found some others from that era at this estate sale, and I wanted to uh, pick them up because I thought they were interesting, too. These are all from about 1906 to 1910. Um, this particular one has the school marm, and she, uh, um, she's kind of flopping around there. But uh, it basically, here we go. Upright. Hey, that's nice. Okay, so uh, the one on the left is the school marm, and it was sent from Quincy, Illinois, and this is during the suffragette period, and there's a whole lot of um, propaganda about women should go back to having children, so it's all telling her about how it's great that you're so good with kids, why don't you get married and have some of your own? And then this one is a devil figure. These really sort of animated comical devil figures were really popular in the 1910s, and I thought he had a really good look. And then these are a uh, different kind. These are all, two of them are real photo and one of them is novelty. Um, but this real photo here is actually a local baseball team. When baseball was st first starting to be really popular, a lot of companies formed teams and there were lots of different um, uh, different ways that uh, baseball teams came together. This one on the back is written champions of, e champions of Eastern Illinois and Western Indiana. So they must have won some tournament. It's possible someone in here ended up becoming a professional baseball player, in which case this card will turn out to be really valuable. So I'm going to do some research on that. And then this one is just fun because this guy, it's uh, where they would do something with uh, photo juxtaposition to make something look gigantic that shouldn't be. This guy is sitting on top of a building in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, let's see, there we go. Maybe that can be a little more visible. A little windy here, but at least we've got good sun today, so it was fun to be outdoors for this. And then this one was kind of a twofer. It's a real photo, and people like real photo because a lot of times they're the only image captured of a certain thing, so some of them can be valuable. This one's a more common thing because it's a guy in his carriage, but then on the back we also have another one, and that's in the blue albumen print, and people like those just because of the blue color from about 1910 again. So those were cool to find. Um, they also were having half off pretty much on all the kitchen stuff, so I bought a bunch of kitchen stuff. And again, I'm in this historic home built in probably like right before or right after the Civil War. And what do I find but 70s mushroom plaque because everybody had something from every era and these old houses have vintage stuff too. This is one of these Japanese pieces from the 70s. It was $2. It's just cute. Someone will like that. You know, I expect they'll sell for about 10 or 12. Um, Pyrex is super popular right now. I think this week, if I heard right, and I have to verify this, somebody apparently found a one-of-a-kind prototype that was never done by Pyrex, and apparently it sold for $12,000 for the set. At least that's what I was told. Um, so Pyrex is going kind of crazy. And again, this house, little house in the middle of nowhere, had Pyrex, because almost every house in America did back in the day, and that's why everybody remembers it now. Ooh, lots of wind here. 
I'll just yeah. sit on that. These were sold to me as a set. I don't know whether this pattern really is a set with these other two pieces, but it didn't matter to me because it was only $12.50 for all three. And we're getting like 18 to 24 for big bowls and the primary colors sell well. And so uh, this was a great deal for whatever it uh, is or isn't as far as going together. I'll have to look it up and see what actually goes with what. I'm pretty sure that they just mixed and match what they like and that's okay because I'll sell it to people who need the other uh, parts for their stuff. This little piece here, if you ever watch Real Nifty Vintage, he's on YouTube. Jeffrey, the guy who does that, really likes black amethyst glass, and that is what this is. This is going to be from the late 20s or early 30s, and the black amethyst was done um, really starting in about 1927 and going through the early 30s. Now, black amethyst is actually not really black. If we had a super, super strong light, you'd see like a purple-colored halo in it because... Uh, it is actually really dense purple. That's the way they make black. Um, the bottom here is kind of sanded off funny, and you'd think, well, why did they do that? Well, that's because this was for ink blotters. So if you had a desk set, you'd wrap the paper piece that was the blotter over the ends of this, and then you roll it back and forth on the ink so that you get the ink off so it doesn't smear when you're writing a letter back then with the old fountain pens. It's kind of complicated. Uh, but people really like to collect these, and this I paid $6 for. It's worth probably $25 to $30, so I thought that was a great deal. And then one other piece that came from that estate is, again, I really focused on kitchen because they were having good deals on kitchen. This is a vit Vitrock, uh, they call this milk glass. It's a sugar um, canister from about 1940. Think red, white, and blue. Uh, they did these in transparent greens in the 1930s, and those are a little more popular than the milk glass. But again, now that we're getting into this farmhouse chic where people are decorating in white, I really look for these sorts of things. Someone asked me the other day, you know, in the years you've been doing this, what is a category that has held its value and really still is collectible like it always has been? And the truth is it's kitchenware uh, because these are practical things, they're functional things, and so people really can um, get them and absorb them into their life and really use them. And it's not just a toy or a decoration. Now, one other thing, so this piece I did a video recently on YouTube about shopping an antique show in Indiana, and there was a space that was full of all sorts of gadgets that had these types of embossed stamps on them. Uh, this is a nutcracker. This is going to date to 1914, original patent date. And on the other side, you see Perfection Nut Grinder Company, Waco, Texas. People are really like these sorts of things because, again, it's something you can use every day. It's cast iron. It's not going to break. Um, but the other thing is that they like them because they represent all this change in technology over the years, and so uh, people will collect them. I got started with this stuff because a woman I knew named Juanita Lane, who I think is still around as an antique dealer in her 80s, um, had a whole space full of this. And I really thought that it was interesting to see all the different designs and the different things that things uh, could do. And certain functions that really are just not necessarily found readily at stores now. So it's, um, it's definitely a collectible area. So there was one other thing that I got at that. Um, and unfortunately, I set it in the car, and I'd really like to show it to you. So um, if you don't mind to um, come with me, I'm going to get it out real quickly, because it was actually the best thing from that sale. And it was a good example of a situation where... You see, I've got a whole bunch of stuff from my show. So I already had a car load when I started on this trip. But um, this piece here I wanted to show because this is an example of something where you can go to a house that has old historic items. And did I steal it? Well, you know, I kind of did, actually. I paid $45 for it. And you might think, wow, that's a lot of money. But I looked it up while I was at the sale, and one just sold for $135 on eBay. And the reason that they're popular is because this is a Dickens piece, and this is based on 
uh, Dickens book written in the 1840s. And the character is Pecksniff. And Pecksniff is a, an unctuous, hypocritical person who's very judgmental and is known for being a sycophant and trying to find people who he perceives as more wealthy and powerful than him that he can hang around with. So um, Dickens was a moralist, and so his characters all tell a story in that regard. And so this is a print done from about 1910. And these, with this very literal animation with the drawn characters, with the outlining and everything, are a certain form of art that some collectors really like, uh, particularly if you have like a craftsman or arts and crafts era house. This was the type of thing that would have been put in it. And I think that's the reason why it went so high. And so I was excited to find it for a third of the retail price, and I will put it out and someone will love it. So that was that, and I'm going to go back over to the uh, other stuff now, and we'll take a look at the, what we found at the other place we went, which was a real surprise, and that was that I ended up, because I was off the road and not exactly where I expected to be, I ended up going to Columbus, Georgia, and it was just sort of in the way, but I thought, well, I'll look up estate sales there. Let me move a few things so that we can show what else uh, we got. Okay, so the thing about uh, Columbus is it's a military town, so lots of people move in and out, so interesting things come and go there. I've found interesting stuff in the past, and it turned out that there was a store going out of business, and this was the last day of their last sale. Uh, they said that it had been an incredible store. It looked really amazing. It was an antique store, and I guess the fellow died, and it was time to sell everything off. So I got kind of just the bitter end of it, but I still found a lot of really cool stuff. And let's take a look. So the first thing here, these are, uh, they might be sad for some folks, but actually they're crutches for a child who likely had a touch of polio because they date to about 1910 and polio was a big problem with children back then. The thing is, my grandfather had it in fact, and the thing is is that it wasn't necessarily something that would if it wasn't too severe, would keep you crippled for life. But it was something that um, you might have to have braces and a lot of therapy. And so fortunately, they must have figured that this kid was going to get better because they're not adjustable. So it's not like they're expecting them to have to have them for years and years. Um, everything was 70% off. So I think I paid $15 for these and they sell for about the price on them for retail, mainly to people who want to do things like haunted houses or sometimes people who are doing um, presentations to children. <laughs> They'll bring in things that related to children if they're talking about history to make it more real. Um, let's see what else is in here. Again, we're just doing this spontaneously as we go. Yes, we have a visitor, I'm sure. I'm sure we might have a few. This thing entertained me because it's very dirty, but uh, real quickly, I'm showing stuff that I found on an unexpected shopping trip in Georgia yesterday. And these things I'm starting to show you came out of a really funky, cool antique store that was being broken apart because the owner passed away. Um, this is real dirty, I've got to fix it, but this is from 1938 and this is when Mihai had some sort of a banquet for its bottlers and people who worked for them and they have this huge marching band with Mihai marches on. Mihai is a soda that was really popular and you can find it, you know, some of these retro sodas are being done again. You can actually occasionally find Mihai in little weird grocery stores out in the middle of nowhere now. Um, but at one time, Nehi was a big deal. And so uh, this would have been the convention and they're all having a big old party. And I figured that somebody who collects old soda bottles and soda fountain stuff will think that that's kind of interesting. And let's see in here. I don't know what they packed where and I don't remember exactly what I got. Oh, okay, yeah. This piece is McCoy. And I hear that, oh. There's a thermometer in it and we can tell how cold it's getting, so let's not look at that. I'll try not to litter the park too much. Okay, everybody, thanks for bearing with me here. If you watched MASH, knee high was what Radar O'Reilly would always talk about, having a great knee high. And yes, that's exactly the soda from MASH. 
Um, this is McCoy, and this is the Cascade pattern. In the 60s, they started realizing that their old traditional stuff, I think you can see the mark there, that their old traditional stuff just wasn't selling anymore, and they had to do something more modern. So they did this funky metallic glaze based on uh, similar glazes by Sasha Brastoff. And it did really well, and so they started doing all sorts of fun things that led to the smiley face cookie jar and all that good McCoy stuff that people like. Mm, it is definitely windy, windy here. This is a um, nice picture from when Bach Tower opened in Florida in the 1920s, so that's going to be something that somebody in Florida will like to have again. This silly thing is draw poker, and I just remembered that when I was a kid, my mom would give this to me because video games were expensive, so this was a battery-operated handheld game to keep you entertained on a sick day from school. Obviously, things have come a long way. This guy is a Shriner's ashtray, and this is going to be a 1950s piece and something that a fraternal organization collector would like. A lot of people are getting into the fraternal organizations again, and he's got his little fez on and the whole thing. So that's something that uh, we see collectors for now. And let me keep going here. What else did we find? This is quite nice. I've been looking for dresser boxes because they've been selling really well lately. This one is to look like a little French Bombay chip. Okay, we're going to go through quickly with what we can while we still have a little juice. These are 1950 shoes, and they were in really great shape, and they're super clean, and they're a size that actually could fit somebody, and those are all important things, so I grabbed those. I expect that they'll sell for about $20. Nordstrom's actually buys them from me sometimes for their shoe museum if it's something that they don't have. And this, which was only $6, is a great piece because it says, Harris County Dome Stadium. And you, if you don't know what the Harris County Dome Stadium is, well, what everyone else calls it is the Astrodome. When it first was opened in 1965, it was briefly called Harris County Dome Stadium, and then it was named after the Astros and the space station in Houston. And so this is early. None of these have been online at any point that I can find, and Astrodome stuff of this era usually sells for pretty good money. I expect this could be worth $100, and I got it for 6 so I felt very, very fortunate about that. I think they just didn't recognize what it was. And I didn't at first either, but uh, we have the power of the internet with us, so uh, that made it uh, possible to do a little quick research. I'm going to quickly grab a few other things while there's time to show you, if there's time. And um, this piece here is kind of a neat, interesting thing. I look for older pictures of black folks because they didn't have necessarily the income or access uh, back in the 1910s when this was made. So uh, these are representations that sell well for me, and I thought that was a nice one. And also, um, these are kind of interesting. This is, uh, I got a couple of these. These are Chokin ware from the 1970s from Japan. And it's this damask, uh, almost like the Spanish uh, coloration and etching into metalwork. And it's starting to be collectible, especially when it's really well done and refined like this piece was. I paid about uh, $4 for that. I expect it's worth about 15 or 20 did get a little bit of political memorabilia because I like to look for that. The one that I'll show you that I think is the most interesting is this one, which is uh, Nixon, and it says, Vote Republican, uh, November 8th, 1960 on the back, Nixon and Lodge. Um, you'll notice that the striker is on the front of these. They changed it to the back in the 60s because people were taking the matches and lighting them and then catching the other matches on fire and burning themselves. I think people drank a lot more back then. Um, but that was a real problem, so they did do something about it. 
I'm going to really quickly go. I got a lot of stuff at this place, so I'm just going to grab a few more quick things so you can see some stuff before we run out of time and battery. And and let's see, glass fishing float, gavel. There's something else in here that I think is a little more significant I'd like to show you really quickly if I can. And it is along the same line of political stuff, so let me get it out of the bottom. It ended up in the bottom because it's very heavy. And that is a pair of bookends, and these feature Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It was a big deal in the 30s. Um, Roosevelt was really seen as this savior who was going to get us out of the Depression, and so a lot of houseware makers started making things with him on it because they needed to have something they could sell. And this, uh, there's another one in there that's the same there on heavy marble. This is bronze. They're actually well cast, and I suspect that these are worth fifty to seventy-five dollars to a political co collector. So when I saw that they were fifteen in the uh, store and the going out of business sale, I grabbed them right away. Um, they made big clocks with him steering a ship because he was steering the ship of state. It was a big deal in the 30s to have anything related to FDR. He also kicked off the Scotty craze because he had Scotty dogs. Um, and so a lot of collectibles from that era actually derive from interest in him. And then real quickly, let's see if I can find one more fun thing to end on just because uh, unfortunately we've got to end. There's a lot more stuff in here then there actually is time to show. Okay, yep. Nice and windy, let's see. Well, let me try one more thing. If we can get it out of the bag. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab the one thing I can just because it's what I can get. These were, in, these were entertaining to me to find because they say Catalina Island. And that means it's the early stuff from Catalina Island in California when Wrigley of chewing gum fame made a pottery factory there so that they could make tile and buildings there because it was too hard to ship it from Los Angeles across the ocean 27 miles. Well, then they started making plates and dinnerware and sending it back to the mainland. And that proved to be kind of a little too much transportation. So Franciscan bought them out and changed the name just to Catalina Pottery. So the Catalina Island stuff's the original stuff. It's the hardest to find. And early in my career, by the first estate sale I ever went to, I found a box full in these two colors for $6 and sold it for 100 bucks, And that's what got me hooked. And so I saw these and had to have them. I think I paid $6 for the pair, and they're worth about $15 to $20 a piece now. So anyhow, I had a lot of fun. It was fun to just sort of spontaneously show you an unexpected haul of various random interesting little things. Happy hunting. This is George at the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I will uh, finish off with, uh, since... This was the thing that someone said was beautiful. We'll go with that. Thank you all for joining us now, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!